Bien, friends, and welcome to the Metacost Crypto Corner brought to you by Navic. I'm your host, Nicolas Vreke, or Nico for short, and today I'm joined by Philip La. Philip is the game product lead at Sky Mavis, best known for building the play to earn super hit Axie Infinity. And before this, Philip was a product manager at Niantic working on Pokemon Go. In our discussion today, we'll touch upon the Axie Infinity economy and its sustainability. We'll talk about Axie Origin, the, the, the game that just came out in, in early access, then the Axie Land gameplay, and then we'll talk about the future of Axie Infinity, Web3 Gaming, etc. Thank you for joining us, Philip. Thanks for having me. Honored to, to be on Metacast. Uh, yeah, huge fan. By the way, is it Philip or Phil? What should I call you? Uh, either. Either. Phil's shorter, so easier. Can go with that. Either. I'll go with Phil. That's, that's, that's chiller. So, by the way, to set the stage, we have at Navic <laughs> and at the Metacost, we have made some interesting observations and research into Axie Infinity and its economy. But I just want to have it on the record that at the, the start of this year, I actually made the prediction that by the end of this year, Axie Infinity would be low. If I had to put money on one company or one game to be the most successful by the end of the year, it would be Axie Infinity. Just setting the stage here. Um, 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 I, I, I've had my thoughts about what, what like the, the, the previous economy, um, and we can go into that, but I still think that you guys are doing a great job. So, um, so yeah, let's, let's dive in. Um, before this, you worked at Niantic, um, who is also already working with blockchain technology. Were you already involved with the Web3 tech uh, there, or is this your first time diving into the rabbit hole? Yeah, uh, no, at Niantic, I was purely focused on Pokemon Go, uh, which has not gotten into the, the blockchain space yet. So yeah, this has been my, my first uh, rodeo into the space. And yeah, it's been, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, everyone that jumps in gets that and has that feeling. What made you, um, what convinced you to actually make the jump in the end? Yeah, so the story behind it was, you know, I, I was, you know, happy at Niantic Pokemon Go was you know, a dream job for me. I love the Pokemon franchise and, and everything uh, around it. So um, yeah, it was it was awesome to work on that. But uh, I started getting into Axie Infinity was actually how I got into to Web3 and blockchain gaming as a whole. Um, and I started playing last year. Um, and yeah, at some point it just clicked. I was like, the, the ownership of, of assets and, you know, the ability to, you know, have it on, a, on, a, on the blockchain and immutable and all that was like, okay, this is this is going to be uh, super fun for gamers uh, to have, you know, this type of experience. Um, so I just felt like I needed to get in and learn more and work on it and, and build it out for everyone else. Um, so uh, that's what ended up kind of moving me into the space. And you know, Axie Infinity was a was an easy choice in terms of you know their leadership and and uh, the learnings that I could have, and, but also just the opportunity. Um, and everything they've set up to, to grow in the, into the future. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I've actually spoken to other people building within the Web3 gaming space, and they told me that they were very sad that you didn't join them and that you ended up at Sky Mavis. Um, so you were very desired um, in the Web3 gaming space when, when you were, uh, you know, actively explore, exploring, um, I guess, you know, where, where to end up and, and where to actually start getting involved here. Yeah, I chatted with, with a bunch of different... Uh, projects and companies and i don't know they, they were all awesome i was i was excited for all of them it was uh uh there were definitely tough choices made but uh yeah no it, by the end of it it was it was clear like axie infinity was um really the the place where uh yeah i'd be able to thrive and and really contribute a lot mm -hmm. what what excites you most about axie infinity is it the community is it is it the team or, or a bit of both uh, yeah, it's a combination of everything, right? Um, so the games themselves, obviously, you know, becoming in a big focus for me was, you know, I want to make fun games. Like, I love the blockchain side. Obviously, it's a huge component. Um, but, you know, I, I think they had that mindset of, you know, we really want to make sure that um, we focus on fun first. Um, we want to make sure that uh, everything we create is, is going to be uh, an awesome experience. <clears throat> um, and so that's kind of the, the number one. And then, the community. Um, so I was part of the community before I even joined, and yeah, it's where I learned a lot about Web three mm -hmm. and and the uh, and people are super supportive and helpful and um, really uh, just loyal. I think to uh, Tax Infinity um, and everything it's uh, it's created. Um, and then I think the 
the last part is just the bigger ecosystem, right? So Axie Infinity is one thing, but now you have Ronin, um, you have, you know, Builder's Program. We want to uh, build out way more games and uh, for Axie Infinity, but also on the chain. Um, so that's just a huge, you know, canvas um, for us to paint on um, to create, you know, really interesting things outside of, you know, just one specific battle game for, for instance. It's, it's a huge array of things. Mm-hmm. What were um, some of the biggest surprises that you, or things that you needed to overcome, or what in, what did you underestimate and underestimate before you actually joined and, and made the dive into Web three? So, what, what were some of the things that needed to to overcome to make the dive? Well, yeah, or what did you underestimate when, when making the switch in terms of maybe I don't know community involvement in in, in actually designing the game or things like that? Yeah, uh, I would say. Yeah, kind kind of what you you mentioned really is uh, has been a big uh, learning area for me. But it's it's a double edge. Uh, I guess that there's there's good and bad. Basically, like I actually love being able to com- uh, you know work with the community and get ideas from them and bounce ideas. Um, and I do that a lot on on Twitter, and and people will see that I talk to the community a lot about the decisions that we make, and it informs um, a lot of what we do. Um, but on the other side, yes, the the community is uh, a force <laughs> to work with, um, and uh, it can be overwhelming. I think for anyone in this space, um, where you know people care a lot, like you know emotionally, uh, financially, uh, they spend a lot of time on it. So everyone cares a lot, and they want to be heard, um, and we we should be listening. Um, and so that's definitely been a big area where. You know, myself and the whole team has been working on getting better at over time. And, you know, I think Jiho has been one of the, obviously the greatest, you know, community managers and, and builders um, around. And so learning a lot from him and, um, yeah, just evolving as we go. Because, yeah, a lot of this still hasn't been done yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that community aspect feels like everyone knows it's important and still people tend to always underestimate it. I've... Um... I've made some investments in, in in companies and I've seen some some young companies start up, build some pretty cool stuff, and then you know just notice that they didn't approach the community in the right way, um, where they have to make some adjustments there. So um, yeah, I can imagine that it feels at least from my side that Axie Infinity was the first to really crack the community nut and, and really did a great job. And um, yeah, I feel like uh, from from browsing Twitter and and seeing what gets posted under the uh, most of the Axie stuff. Um, it's it seems like you know people are very very involved yeah and and i mean you can see it right like we've had ups and downs and you know uh and the space as a whole um but people are still around like uh you know we launched origin there was you know instantly even if it that was just on desktop there was almost three hundred thousand people on the first day um just testing out origin there's no tokens nothing they they just love the game um and they love being part of the community so um, yeah, that that really shines, especially in uh, you know when markets dip and all that. You know, people are still around, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious to to um, to have your thoughts on some of the learnings you took from Pokemon Go and Niantic that you feel like are very relevant now that you're building out the Axie Infinity gaming ecosystem. Could you share a bit more about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I worked on the economy on Pokemon Go, um, so I let up you know, all of our sinks and sources. And um, I mean, all of that's super relevant to Axie Infinity um, and really any any game. <laughs> um, and so that's that's how I look at a lot of, you know, how we design Axie Infinity is through, you know, just game design and, and economic balancing. Um, to me, um, they're, the token kind of aspect of, you know, external investors and, and all these things can, um, can purchase token as well um, outside of just players makes a difference. But um, at the end of the day, you know, uh, to me, it's it's definitely supply and demand. You know, if you have um, a certain economy, um, you need to manage how much people are getting, if they want it, um, once they have it, what do they do with it? And then, you know, how do certain resources get sunk? And so just balancing all of that and having a very clear idea of what that economy looks like, um, you know, that's a lot of what I worked on at Pokemon Go. And now that's, you know, just applying that at Axie Infinity as well. Um, so that's one thing. And then I think the other part is, um, you know, uh, looking at uh, the community and, and research. So a lot of what I did at Pokemon Go was, you know, player research and um, interviews and looking at data and, um, 
you know, doing uh, different studies to really understand, you know, what we should build that uh, will be fun and and make sense um, for the community as well. And so that's, you know, very much transferable to um, in terms of working with the community, looking at our data at Axie Infinity and making decisions through all that. Um, and yeah, it, you know, over the past decade, my career has always been in growth and product. And so a lot of those are, are transferable across the board in terms of, you know, now we want mm-hmm. to grow through, you know, some UA methods or um, we want to do more, you know, uh, creator programs on the marketing side. And so I can, you know, advise and help out on that. And then also on the product side is just building out our product management practice um, internally. Um, and I'm I'm the first product hire, basically. So, you know, they've they've done a killer job so far. And so now I'm just helping to to kind of accelerate and upgrade kind of our uh, our skills there. Mm hmm. It's um, when we record this, it's, it's the end of April and it's almost exactly a year ago when we saw the astronomical growth in the user base of, of Axie Infinity, mm-hmm. uh, when everyone was talking about play to earn and, you know, you can quit your job and, and play this game. Um, and so, you know, a few months later, uh, Navic, we, we did the reports um, and then, you know, things have, have, have settled down a bit. A lot of our listeners are still, I, th- I feel like when, when talking to them, um, under the impression that you know, the, the Axie gameplay loop hasn't changed, or at least not the economic loop hasn't changed mm-hmm. since, you know, we, we published that report. Um, could you share a bit more about, you know, what the game, the, the traditional Axie Infinity um, original game itself looks like right now? What has changed? What decisions have you made? For what reasons? Uh, so the original, as in the, the game that's been running, you know, for the past two years, or the or the new origin game yes, that we're looking original, at? Yes, original, yes. Yeah, original is a bad word of me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, my apologies. Yeah, we call it classic, um, but B2, uh, so a lot of different names. Okay, um, got but, it. But uh, yeah, we, um, yeah, for that game, uh, we actually haven't made that many changes to it. Um, you know, there's been balancing changes and, and updates and season rewards, and um, but really the focus has been to to migrate over to Origin, um, which is kind of the you know, all the, the brand new gameplay and graphics and, you know, basically the future of, of, of kind of our battles game. Um, so, yeah, in terms of that, that part of the economic loop is still the same. You know, people can can earn SLP within the game um, and AXS if you make it to the leaderboard. And then SLP and AXS uh, can also be used for breeding more axes. Um, and so that that's all still the same, um, but that's also um what is uh going to get a lot of changes through origin um and some of the new features we're working on all right let's talk about origin i'm I'm curious um maybe first the strategy why did you decide to 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 make a new game instead of of changing the, the 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 classic one um and then you know maybe in some more detail what what big changes you made um and why as well yeah, so I, I wasn't around when you know the actual decision was made, but um, definitely the the team felt that um, you know V two just uh, and, and the classic game just wasn't good enough. Um, you know it was solid, but you know the graphics weren't there. the The gameplay didn't have as much progression, um, and so they felt you know we really need to level up. And Origin was kind of the answer to that. Um, and so with Origin. Uh, you know, we're in alpha right now, early access. A lot of people are, are testing, we're balancing, we're tweaking. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just a lot more to it. Uh, there's a whole, you know, charms and runes power up progression system. Uh, there's uh, a lot of changes to adventure mode. There's uh, free to play now. So you don't need to, you know, spend X, you know, dollars to just start the game. Um, and yeah, there, I, I can dive into a lot more of that, but that's kind of the thinking is, you know, this is the game that will be able to cater more to the masses with that free to play with the better, you know, graphics, more progression and uh, yeah, be more sustainable ultimately in the future. Mm-hmm. And so the the gameplay itself is still very similar where you have, you know, your team of three axes that battles against another team of three axes. Um, you know, with some additional layers on top, um, you know, and then if you win or if you do well, you earn SLP and AXS. Is, is that like th- these principles st- still there? Yeah. So that, that basic game loop is still the same. Um, uh, the, uh, the main difference is going to be, or the, one of the biggest differences is going to be power-ups you can use um, outside of just your three axes, um, like in, in the classic game. Um, 
but yeah, other than that, yeah, mm-hmm. SLP, AXS, all of that will be there. Um, there might be, you know, tweaks in exactly how they're distributed and, um, and how it all works now that we have free axes as well. You know, we have to manage the, the economy against those. Um, but uh, yeah, the basics are still the same. How did the choice to also allow people to play with free axes um, influence your design around, you know, the the the, the scarcity of, of NFTs and, and and these kind of things? Are these you know these free NFTs? Are they also um, th- like is there a difference between the, the ones you can get for free and the ones you can actually get on the blockchain? Yeah, so the free ones are actually not on chain. Um, so they are you know basically like a you know your web two version of of uh of assets mm. um so they're in game uh and you earn them as you go through the adventure mode um you can get more of them um and you learn the game through them right you can try out different combinations and it really helps people you know get a grasp of like different things they can do in the game before they you know need to make that first purchase of, of an nft axie um, but the biggest difference will be that uh you know there there will be you know obviously less variety in the types of you know combinations and and uh and metas that they have access to but also um they won't be able to earn the tokens um so if you're using you know just free axes in arena mode um then you wouldn't be able to earn you know slp and axs and all that so um that's kind of the and you know if you're you're not able to earn those you're not able to breed axes so um there's kind of this evolution that we want to take people through of you know come in just enjoy the game um you know, learn about different combinations, you know, try cool stuff, um, and then uh, slowly transition them to learn about the blockchain and understand it um, and eventually be able to, to get their first Axie. And, and with the new system, you actually don't need to have three uh, NFT Axies um, to, to, to get started earning, right? You can get one F- NFT Axie and, and two free Axies. Um, so the barrier to entry is much lower now. And ultimately, we, we just want to introduce, you know, blockchain gaming to more people um and and to get them into the space um in a way that is uh is friendly to them and not too overwhelming um and so that whole flow is still going to have get optimized a lot over time you know we want to make improvements to our wallet and um and all these areas that people need to go through when they on uh, on board to the blockchain uh space so um yeah that's a lot of kind of mm-hmm. the thinking behind the the free axes is the current you know, on-chain onboarding to get your first Axie, is it still the same as it used to be where you have to get an exchange, get some ETH, um, you know, bridge that over to the Ronin chain, then, you know, in, in the um, in the Axie marketplace, then finally purchase your first Axie? Is that still the case? And how are you thinking about that evolving in the future? Yeah, uh, I, I, we've introduced new ways for people to basically, you know, purchase uh, tokens directly. Um through uh through ramp uh, which is kind of the service we use um so that's a way for for people to not have okay. to necessarily go through that whole flow and then um i think there's still another big barrier for you know just web3 as a whole in terms of the the whole uh, secret phrases and um all of those things with you know a wallet that you know people haven't dealt with before um so those are the areas that we're really trying to dive into figure out you know how can we make the ronin wallet even more friendly and easier for people to get onto yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, mm-hmm. And so essentially now you have a bit of a freemium model where you get people in a very like free and easy way to get the, to play your game. And then when they want to like really start diving in, um, then you give them the option to to purchase their first NFTs and, and um, get them involved that way. Is that fair? Yeah, exactly. And I think this, this goes towards um, just the overall uh, narrative um, in the space as well of, focusing more on the fun and, you know, play and earn or play and own and, um, you know, getting people to just enjoy the game and have fun like any traditional game. And yeah, you can, you can earn stuff along the way and own the things that you, uh, you obtained. And, you know, if you ever stop playing one day, you can sell them if you want, you can trade them along the way. Um, but the whole idea is to really have people focus more on the game itself, um, when they, when they get into it so that, you know, even when they, uh, uh, kind of on board to the economic side it's still about you know the game itself and progression in that mm-hmm. what is the the current thinking of the sky mavis team around you know play to earn play and earn play and own and, and all these types of words and essentially you know making money playing games yeah i mean i think um the you know the right wording is is still tbd i think we we have kind of embraced the play and earn uh uh, 
type wording. I think oh, people on, on the podcast here have probably talked about it. I think uh, I've talked to Ryan about it a lot at Delphi. Um, so, so shout out to him. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think for us, like we, I think we see it as uh, other games out there too, right? You know, even in traditional where there are people who want to really progress faster in the game and there are people who, you know, are willing to grind and, and get resources and, and there's kind of this trading system. And so I think all of that continues to exist in terms of people being able to, um, you know, grind and, and earn resources that someone else might want. Um, but all of that, you know, ultimately has to be driven uh, by people who want to play the game, who need resources, who want to progress, who want to collect things. Um, and so that's really the the big focus is if you have people who want to progress and want to collect, you know, assets and whatever it is in your game, then all that earning stuff is is uh, uh, is actually the easier part, um, right? Because uh, you just have people who want to uh, who want those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the end of of these, you know, conversations, I I like to have a little little bit of philosophizing going on. Yeah. So maybe then we can talk about, you know play to earn and having a job in the metaverse and all of that stuff. Um, yeah. but before that, I'm, I'm curious to, to understand a bit of the, um, the next steps or maybe the vision behind Axie origin. Um, it feels like it's, it's its own thing, right? It's, it's this, you know, this, this battle game loop three V three. Um, and, uh, I'm curious to, to understand how that fits into the broader Axie infinity, infinity universe vision. Uh, yeah. So in terms of the broader Axie ecosystem, you know, we have Origin, we have the land game we're working on. There's going to be many other games, but uh, yeah, Origin is definitely kind of the the premier battle game we have. Um, and, you know, we are, you know, going to be putting more and more resources into it to evolve it. Um, I think esports is definitely a big focus that will become more and more uh, important for it as well as we uh, look to make it more competitive. That's actually one of the, the big things we're focusing on now. We know V2 has certain components that a lot of players like that, um, you know, haven't necessarily directly translated to V3 um, and Origin. So those are some things we're adding in. But um, it's actually, uh, it's also where, you know, a lot of uh, uh, features that, you know, we haven't, we've held off until now um, because we were waiting for Origin. So things like cosmetics and things like upgrading. And so, all of those will basically further expand the progression and, you know, the expression that people can do within the game um, to get to a point where, you know, it is, uh, you know, this just awesome, fun game that you can play, express yourself, uh, be competitive um, and, you know, running live ops around that. Right. And that's not even something we've done yet <laughs> is, is having kind of live ops and events and, um, and uh, yeah, excited to do more of that. That's a lot of what I did at on Pokemon Go too. Was you know live ops like that. That game lives off of it uh, every you know month. There's mm -hmm. tons of events, um, and I think uh, a lot of our players uh, for on Axie would would love those. Yeah, I still remember when there was the month that Pokemon Go came out. It felt like we were the closest to world peace <laughs> that we've ever been. Yeah, um, that was a, that was a magical summer. <laughs> everyone just in the streets. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to to understand a bit better your and, and Sky Mavis's vision behind the Axie universe. Mm -hmm. um, is this an IP centered universe? Is this an asset centered universe? Is your vision that you can you know you own your Axies and you can use them to play Origin and, and do battles, but you can also use them in, in other games? Is that a bit uh, how you're thinking around this? Yeah. So uh, yeah, it, it's it's a full you know. Uh, franchise for sure that the way we're looking at it is uh, you know your axes are your ticket to all these experiences is kind of what we what we say and so you know big part is uh, we released even the uh, so I'm helping run the builders program right now as well which we're actually allowing you know community members to to build new experiences using the Axie IP which to me is just you know amazing because we can empower people but um, one of the requirements is that the games um, should require uh, people to have uh, uh, either uh, NFT axes to start playing, or there's you know some premium experience that requires NFT axes, um, even if it's free to play to start. Um, so that that's kind of the way we think about it. Like every game uh, will need axes in some way, um, and uh, if you want to make it more accessible, I think having free to play part of it makes sense to us. But NFT axes should be a core part um, of the overall gameplay and. Um, and yeah, we we want there to be obviously like very polished, fleshed out games. Um, 
with things like Origin and Land and, and you know, that we might, you know, work with other studios to build too. But also there will be some of these mini games that, that our community builds or maybe we put out um, that people can use them to, to play like Axie Snake or, I don't know, uh, all different types. Mm-hmm. Could you, um, because this ties into my next topic, uh, what I'd like to have some more thoughts on, and that is, you know, your land gameplay that you've you've mentioned a few times. Um, Could you tell us, like, from the start, what Mm. what that is, um, how it works, and and the vision behind it? Yeah, so land gameplay has definitely evolved uh, through the years, um, and uh, the the latest kind of iteration of it, which is what we we really kind of leaned into and, and are focused on, is um it's actually quite a few things it's a uh, number one a very uh very ambitious project um it's kind of this multi-year thing that we are investing into um but the base kind of alpha that we're looking at right now is uh kind of a farming simulation game um so you know you're able to to use axes to collect resources and build up structures and um and uh and complete tasks uh but the idea is um like overall when i look at the space there's kind of two big buckets of land. There's kind of the, the very metaverse type, um, which is, you know, you go around, you can build things, you, you know, hang around with people. Um, and then there's, you know, land with, with actual games um, on top. And so we have uh, very much been focusing on, on the latter, um, which is we want a real game. We want a full game loop. We want all of that on our land. Um, but after that, we also want to add in the metaverse component. So that's kind of what's really unique about Axie Land is, uh, it's kind of everything um, that we want to do on it. Um, obviously, the game will be the foundation, but people should be able to take their Axie and walk around and, you know, hang out with people as well and um, and do mini games or, or whatnot together. Um, so that's kind of uh, overall what we're looking at as in terms of the vision is, you know, this place that people can go to play the game, to build up structures, to, you know, battle chimeras, all of that, but also hang out with their friends, socialize, show, you know, show off their land and all of that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the thinking behind land, um, right now. And for these gameplay experiences, do you, um, will, will that be user generated content? Will you provide like tools for that? Yeah. So, uh, we'll, we'll provide, uh, we'll be providing a lot of it. So I would say, you know, I, I think the, the parallel that we've looked at is, is Everdale, um, was kind of an inspiration for it, but you know, Farmville and, and all of those, are obviously the precursors, um, that's the type of gameplay we're looking at where, yeah, we, we have, you know, structures and resources and all of that will be provided for people to play that game part. Um, but, you know, in the future, yeah, we'd love to do more UGC things as well um, as we go. And, you know, we've talked about SDK um, and ways for people to build new experiences on land. Um, that's something we still definitely want to do in the future, um, but that's that's a bit further out. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So you have a battle um, gameplay with, that people can use to, to battle their axes. You have a metaverse style or mini mini games, you know, a place where people can take their axes and hang out. Um, what other game experiences are you envisioning within your your the axie universe? Honestly, uh, like everything. <laughs> um, I think uh, we've we've uh, we have a you know BD team now, and uh, they have been just talking to a lot of different studios out there. Um, and you know us internally we have a lot of ideas ourselves but um you know i I can say our community is has has brought up a lot of ideas too from tower defense to mobas to you know some of these are obviously bigger projects than others to merge games um and a lot of the builders program uh uh kind of participants and applicants have have come up with super uh cool demos already from uh, also racing games um and uh and platformer um we have uh one project i think uh yeah called across lunasia um that literally just community members um building and it's a platformer you know you can use all your different axes in it and uh yeah it looks looks awesome um so yeah it's it's gonna span across um everything that's really awesome um one of the things that gets me excited um and what i see a lot of companies and studios building towards it is a sort of shared economic layer where different games and experience are built upon um so as far as i understand what you're doing is this shared economic layer is more based on the axie nfts where you you just you get a set of axes and you can use your axes in, in different games um 
do you see a world where there's more than only axes that get shared between um, between experiences and games? And I'm thinking about, you know, you maybe there's a different token like than SLP that you can farm within the farm gameplay and you need that token to partake in uh, like a city builder game or whatever. Um, is that something you're, you're thinking about? Yeah. Um, so in terms of, uh, yeah, so primitives wise, I would say, yeah, axes are like, you know, a very base level, you know, NFT that can mm -hmm. be used across games. But um, number one, we can we can look at land as primitives, too. Um, I think like we have obviously our major land gameplay that we're building. But, you know, if a builder um, and a community member wants wants to create a mini game for for land um, and say, like, all land holders will have access to this um, using their land in some way. Um, yeah, land, land, are, uh, land NFTs are also primitives, um, and there will probably be many experiences built on that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, in terms of, you know, tokens and NFTs being used across uh, even more games, uh, I think we definitely want to do more of that and explore that. Uh, a lot of that comes down to game balancing too, though, right? So, you know, for example, a, mm -hmm. a big question from the community has been like, will SLP be used in land game? Um, and so the, the tough part on the game design side for that is, you know, now we, if we're using this token to be, you know, part of the core game loop of progression, um, now you have an external kind of factor that affects how people can progress, right? So, you know, if, if the price or if, you know, the supply and demand changes externally from the land game, suddenly it might be super easy to progress or super hard to progress in land. Um, and so we want to make sure that we, we create economies that, makes sense and, and makes sense for the progression of the game. Uh, but there are ways to integrate it in ways that aren't as disruptive, right? So if SLP is needed for, you know, more advanced, you know, structures or cosmetics and all that, that's very much possible and, and things we're, we're looking at. Um, so that's kind of the mm -hmm. thinking behind, you know, tokens and NFTs being used across games. Um, and same with, you know, uh, the land items, you know, sure, they, they can be used on in our land game, but they can also have a different meaning in another game. And I think that's, you know, up to every different game in, in the Axie ecosystem to figure out. Yeah, it makes a lot of yeah. sense. Um, the So when I look at Axie and, and everything surrounding it, you have, you know, Axie Infinity, the core game, mm -hmm. and then Origin is might, might be next to it. Then you have the broader Axie universe, yeah. and then you have Ronin. How do you see, um, like, are, are you involved in, in what is going to be built on Ronin or you're only mainly, or are you mainly focused on, on the, the, the smaller Axie universe? Uh, I help out. Uh, it's definitely, you know, uh, got a lot of my plate already with Axie. So <laughs> don't, don't dive in as much as I'd, I'd want. Imagine, but, yeah. Um, yeah. The Ronin universe is, you know, basically we want it to be the, the premier, you know, gaming blockchain. Um, and uh, the whole idea is, you know, we have this huge audience already. Um, and we are really um, careful about what we want to put out there for them. And so, you know, anything we do put on the chain and, and that we do, um, you know, really, really promote is, you know, our endorsement, right, to our, our millions of, of players. Um, and so it's not something that we just want to open up and allow anyone to come in and, and start you know, building whatever experiences. And, you know, obviously there's, uh, we want to make sure like block space and all of those things go to the best experiences too. So it's very much focused on being a premier mm. um, kind of uh, platform um, where we are curating kind of the best things we can um, for our audience. Um, and, you know, over time, as, as we figure out new processes, it, it might become a little bit more open, but definitely earlier on, um, you know, we are looking for the best of the best. Um, and yeah, if anyone wants to, is interested on in being on the chain, definitely reach out. Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of the thing behind Ronin, but it will be yeah a plethora of different IPs, games, experiences, everything on the chain. So if I put on my critic or cynic hat, that <laughs> sounds quite a lot like what Apple's doing. We have a bunch of users that are within our ecosystem, mm -hmm. and now we're building this platform. There's walled gardens. You need to come to us if 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 you want to, you know, access our users. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I I think um, in the longer term we probably will want to open it up more. Um, but uh, yeah, right now we we definitely feel like we want to make sure there is some curation in the space, especially given you know the amount of you know 
the 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 large spectrum of types of things you get and you know there's bad actors out there there's you know obviously people trying yeah. to you know attack others in, in uh, malicious ways um and so that's something that we want to uh really just be careful about earlier on um and we don't want to be uh be in a situation where you know our chain is affected uh negatively because we had some bad actor that just came and started you know spamming the the chain or things like that um so yeah that's something we're just careful about but i think the goal is to be more open um as we as we progress mm -hmm. as much as i am a crypto bull i've been in the crypto space for a while and i think you know everything should yeah. be permissionless i totally get what you're saying because it feels like yeah. you know there are probably more scam projects out there right now than there are non-scam projects. And I can also yeah. so very much imagine that your audience, so the players that actually are onto Ronin, um, that many of them actually only own Axis. Do you have any numbers on that? Uh, I don't have the numbers on that. Uh, but yeah, totally. Yeah, I agree. There's, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, not, uh, uh, yeah, scam projects or, or bad projects out there. And yeah, we, we're you, doing the you full... You can call it what it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we're doing full due diligence on anything we put on, right? And so um, that's kind of the, you know, the promise we'll give to our players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Um, next, I'd, I'd like to have your... your this, this is the time where I, I put on my philosopher hat um, and uh, we can talk a bit more about that. I'm curious to have your views and thoughts on... Um, so you told me before you you were very strongly involved with game economies. Um, now you've had the time to experience what it is, at uh, how it is at Sky Mavis, Axie Infinity. Um, do you see a world where um, there are games of which a significant part of the player base, and for me significant means more than, let's say, 20%, um, makes a living of playing or being involved within a game ecosystem i think it's i think it's possible um uh if if the game itself uh is is designed in a way that allows for it really um and is is fun enough to drive so when you think of you know web 2 right like all the revenue coming in uh which comes from usually the top you know especially in free to play the top you know, maybe 5%, 10% of players, right? Like all of that's going to developers. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, when I look at, you know, uh, Web3 models where, for example, in Xfinity, 95% of it goes back to players. The rest goes back to players in a way too because it goes to the treasury. Um, but uh, if you take all that revenue that these free-to-play, you know, games games bring in and just redistribute it out to players, um, yeah, it's very possible the, the economics can work for that, right? Um, especially if you have, you know, people who are down to spend a lot to get that super rare item and, and super rare, um, you know, achievement and and and, uh, and progress. So, um, yeah, I think it's possible. But yeah, back back to uh, the fundamentals. It's just like you got to have a good game people want to spend on. Like that's it. Um, and uh, uh, you know, people bring up the kind of World of Warcraft gold mining and all that. Like you know, it it works. Um, it didn't necessarily. I think uh doesn't necessarily break the economy if you kind of structure it properly mm -hmm. yes i think that's, that's important a lot of people um that are critical about blockchain and games bring up the example of the diablo 3 um mm -hmm. real money war markets that basically they had to shut down after a few weeks because it was just breaking the game um and that for me is an example of you know a game that was not designed for having an open economy where you could just pay money to finish the game suddenly, um, yeah. where it just destroyed the gameplay loop um, that made it yeah unsustainable. Yeah, so I think that's the... You have to be careful around what you make into a token and tradable, right? Because, yeah, people can literally just pay and and win the entire game, um, which in, in Diablo case was, was you know, getting a rare item and, and having, uh, yeah, the strongest items then. Uh, yeah, it breaks the whole game. <laughs> um, you you want to be careful around making sure that the things that people can buy and trade, you know, contribute to, you know, progression and achievement and, you know, getting ahead, but it isn't the thing <laughs> that once you get it, you're literally, you know, done the game. So um, that's something mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah, people definitely need to be careful about in this space. Mm -hmm. With that, I'm curious, um, you know, building a strong engagement loop is easy when you have pvp right because new players will always provide a new sense of achievement and, and, and challenge mm -hmm. um do you plan on building out more around uh, pve as well 
Yeah, uh, we actually want to do a lot more. You know, PvP is not for everyone. I would say, you know, I I love mm. playing games, but I've never been that good at PvP. <laughs> um, I just don't uh, uh, don't get into like the nitty gritty as much in terms of like optimizing all the little. I just want to play and have fun a lot of times, right? And I think PvE is is good for that. Um, so yeah, we want to do a lot more than that. Like we've talked about it, and it's in our kind of public roadmap of, um, you know, a lot of our game we took inspiration from Slay the Spire, which is a full P, uh, 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 P versus E game, and so we could introduce you know different modes that uh, might be more uh, PVE friendly um, in terms of you know battling different monsters, roguelike experience, um, all of that um, we want to do in the future as well um, to cater to you know different types of uh, gamers, the non diehard competitive ones. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. So, um, I, you know, my job is I'm 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 a, I'm a venture capital investor, and so I see a lot of decks. I speak to a lot of teams um, each day. Mm-hmm. Um, I see a lot of play to earn gaming guilds at my at my desk. You know, I get a lot of a lot of calls with them, um, and you know, they almost always own a significant amount of. Axes um, that they rent out <laughs> yeah. to the scholars, to scholars that that actually like that, that play the game, that generate SLP of, of which they take a cut. Um, I'm curious, curious to have your thoughts on the sustainability of the guild model, the the you know the owner of the asset, the scholarship model, um, you know in games, you know being sustainable. Um, would love to have, have your thoughts on that. On that. Yeah, it seems to be a hot topic lately. Actually, I haven't uh, personally actually even put as much structured thought into it as I'd like yet. Um, but I think overall, um, it, it actually goes back to the other point we had, right, around, you know, is it sustainable to earn um, from games uh, uh, at, you know, a certain level? Um, and the game needs to support that. So it actually uh, matters more on the game side if they're able to balance their economies in a way that allow for these guilds to, you know, be able to to earn and, um, and sustainability. And I think guilds will evolve too, right? So in... Um, you know, in Web2, guilds were literally like you work together to do something um, in the game. And I think guilds will will have components of that in the future, too, where it's not just about, uh, you know, we come in and we're trying to get as many tokens as we can. It's, you know, we want to work together to, to progress in some part of the game together, too. And so that's actually some of the, uh, you know, more interesting, fun parts of it. Um, but on the mm-hmm. kind of uh, earning side, uh, yeah, if the games, if we have enough games out there, um, that are is driving enough, you know, uh, input and new players and um, and kind of economic growth in the area. Then, uh, yeah, guilds guilds can continue to sustain if there's demand for what they do. Right. Um, ultimately, it's you know they're providing a value um, of mining some uh, and earning some token that people might want to to save time um, or save uh, whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Um- final question i'd like to have your thoughts on is the backlash that in general you know blockchain and games get from traditional gaming crowds you've come from the yeah. traditional gaming world um I, I'm, I'm assuming you've you've ha- heard maybe some ex-colleagues tell you like what the hell are you doing why are you joining all these scams yeah. um how do you think we as an industry what, what do you think we we can do obviously like we can make cool games right um what what, what can we do better to mm-hmm. to onboard um some of the, the the critics and and get them get them on our side yeah um i think it's it's definitely going to take time uh my you know ex-colleagues or people i know in kind of the industry are have definitely been relatively kind to me uh no one's really you know attacked or called me nice. out or anything so uh, i think people have been good about it um but yeah, I think uh, education is a big part. Uh, I think, you know, there's, you know, these fundamental things that need to be figured out in, in the space, right? Because there are a lot of scams or there are a lot of, you know, bad projects and, and bad actors that they will point to that and just use that as, you know, the go-to example or whatnot, right? And I think, you know, slowly getting better um, with with uh, figuring out security and all these things in the space. Um, and then also just, um, yeah, what you mentioned really is, is making really good games um, that bring people in um, that they want to play regardless of the, the kind of blockchain component and then having them feel the value of, you know, getting an NFT here and there or 
uh, or being able to, to earn something um, and really having them experience it, I think is a big part of it. Um, cause until you do it, it's, it, it can be hard to understand, you know, the value of like, you know, I'll just play normal games. Why do I need this? And, and what's the difference? Right. Um, so there's that. Um, and yeah, I think just patience and, and, you know, not, uh, and being understanding of, of people and, you know, not necessarily attacking them or saying, you know, like, you're ridiculous for not, not understanding this. Like, um, you know, uh, I think everyone should, uh, uh, should be able to have an open conversation um, in good faith, hopefully. All right, awesome. You um, before a bit before you mentioned that you know if any teams are building a blockchain game have not decided on what you know blockchain to build on, um, and and you know maybe the audience would be a good fit to build on Ronin, um, they could contact you. Uh, is there anything else you want to plug people uh, that that people can help you with? Yeah, I mean, we're we're always hiring. Uh, we are, uh, you know, constantly growing team, looking looking for the best. Um, so yeah, definitely reach out if uh, if you're interested in uh, Sky Mavis and, and working on Axie Infinity and uh, getting into the space. Um, definitely looking for uh, good people all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, one other thing was uh, just the builders program. So um, I actually wanted to. I, I can explain a bit more about it, but. Uh, with the Builders program, it's kind of, you know, one of the first times, you know, gaming IP is allowing people to officially, you know, build on top of the IP and, you know, generate revenue and to build out their audience um, and actually officially sanction and encourage. Um, and so uh, no other really gaming uh, IP has done this. Um, and so I definitely encourage everyone to check that out if you are looking, if you want to just build out an Axie mini game, start, you know, getting players, getting revenue, all that, you can just do it now. Um, and uh, we, uh, you know, happy to, to talk more with anyone who's interested in that too. Um, you know, we, we allow it openly, but uh, we are also taking people into our builders program, um, which is where we provide even more support um, to those who are really serious about it and, and have a full team and uh, really want to create something uh, special in, in kind of the Axie Infinity ecosystem. So, all of that is is available um, now for you know any developers and you know people who wanted to try creating a game uh, that's available to check out. Awesome. And where can people find you, Phil? Uh, I'm on Twitter um, at Philip La, uh, and uh, yeah, on on LinkedIn as well. Um, so can can hit me up on any of those. All right, fantastic. Well, uh, Phil, this was uh, really great. We've talked a lot about Axie Infinity. It's been amazing to finally get some facts because in the end, like we're just hypothesizing about what you guys are doing, what the plans are. Um, and so it's been, uh, it's been amazing to, to have you on and get, get to ask you some of these questions. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it, was, it was an honor to be in. Uh, yeah, great, uh, great chat. Cool. All right. Well, um, Phil, thanks for joining. Listener, thank you so much for listening. This has been The Metacost by Navik. Um, if you want to talk more about this kind of stuff, we hang out in our Discord. You can come join us there. Um, and then with that, we're out and we look forward to speaking to you in the next episode. Cheers. <laughs>